Hey, this is going out to one guy. How could you be happy that 20,000 Dutch kids got molested? It doesn't prove your religion is better than theirs. It's a really, really sick concept. And if you start living your life that way, start trying to prove how good your faith or whatever it is you have is better than someone else's by their, by their tragedies, it's vulgar. Okay, there's a thing about living in glass houses. When Ahmed and Ajad said, hey, we don't have homosexuals in Iran. Everybody laughed because we knew he does have homosexuals in Iran. People shouldn't act as if they don't have molesters in their country, in their culture, in their faith. <clears throat> there are just as many Muslim molesters as there are Christian molesters as there are atheist molesters. It's the way humans are. Every group of people has sick men who want to rape little boys. <clears throat> they just do and little girls, and grown-ups. <clears throat> anyway, so when you see this news, and I've had a couple people say, make some comment about how this confirms, you know, that there's going to be this wave of people that are going to go to Islam now because of how horrible things are and, and how wrong the Catholic Church or the Christians are. <clears throat> but the reality is, if you live in a country, let's say, let's pick, for example, Egypt or Saudi Arabia, where, um, Saudi Arabia especially, where things are very sacred, um, I'm wondering, when you're in Saudi Arabia, can you speak up about molestations? Because if you're in Saudi Arabia or Egypt um, or any other country where it's not as open a society, more of a sacred society, in that sacredness, is there a safe haven for molesters? Because that's why the Dutch thing happened. That's why the Catholic Church thing has happened because there's an umbrella of sacredness where the sicko guys hide beneath this wall of sacredness where they're safe to play with little boys and rape them. And if these little boys say anything, these little boys are doomed. You know, I have a friend of mine who's Egypt I have a friend of mine who is Egyptian. He told me about a Saudi friend of his whose little boy was raped by the schoolmaster. He said that he got a doctor's notice saying that his boy had been anally penetrated. And he had a witness, his son had witnessed it. He went and to, to the authorities in Saudi Arabia and uh, um, because he didn't have, what, four or five witnesses, whatever was required, um, the schoolmaster was not prosecuted. And somehow, the schoolmaster was there to witness as the father of the raped child was whipped in public. Now, I don't know if that actually happened. Tell me, do you think that really happened? My friend is a pretty honest guy. And the fact that he in Egypt thinks that happened says to me that it's probably not very open. You know, it's like, he said to me, this friend of mine, he said, you know, we don't use the word cancer around here. I mean, you know, we don't say cancer. It's just not right. There's a whole bunch of things you don't say in some of these countries because it's just not right. But see, that, that lack of freedom of dialogue, of free speech, means more secret molestations because the molestations are happening. They're happening everywhere. And the fact that I see 20,000 kids molested, it's actually good news. It means that that cycle of secrecy that was going to rape 20,000 more over the next 10 years was broken. At least part of it was. So it takes an openness and to dive in through the sacred wall to stop molestation. Do you have the courage to break through the sacred wall to stop children from being molested? And it's not just religion. It's sports. The sacred wall of sports. Um that met Sandusky raping kids. And because of some mental sacred wall, the kid, the kid didn't get any help. Um, and the guy continued to rape. See, <clears throat> there's only a certain percentage of people molesting. But when, like the Catholic Church, what they do, when they found out about it and they keep moving them from place to place, they took the situation and made times 10, times 100. So instead of one person molesting one child and getting caught, like a stepdad molesting a kid or two, and going to jail or prison the guy gets away. And instead of molesting one or two kids, he molests hundreds. We had a guy here in California molested like 800 kids in his lifetime. 800 kids! If we were open and we could dialogue about it, we could have stopped him when he tried his first time. Think of all the lives we could have made better. So, you shouldn't go around, whether we're talking about terrorism, they're the terrorists, we're not, they're the molesters, they're the pedophiles, we're not. Don't do it. You can't win because our, your day is coming. If you're in a society and you've never read in the news about a massive molestation ring being broken, 
that it's still growing and it's growing exponentially right under your nose because every society has it. But you don't hear about it from China. I haven't heard about it from Saudi Arabia. I've heard about it from America, the Dutch, you know, Europe, all these places because we have a free press. They can talk about this stuff. So instead of thinking, wow, those guys are a bunch of scumbags. Look how horrible they are. Think, ooh, we better take a look at our house. Um, it's about male domination. Um, it's mostly men. And uh, um, if you're in an area where men have opportunity, the environment is sacred or secret. And people are un it is unsafe for people to speak out. Um, uh, you know, a Muslim friend once told me, when I was confessing about something, he said, you know, we Muslims don't confess. Confessing isn't good. And see, that, now, if confession isn't good, um, that creates sort of a stifled opportunity for finding out about things. Is that true? Is that a fact about Muslims? Um, now, I've got a lot of kids, and I have to spend a lot of time with kids. I love my kids. But sometimes I get bored to tears hanging out with them. I'm always amazed when I see guys who love spending time with kids, and they want to be with kids all the time. The first thing I think is, I don't know. Hey, if a guy came, no matter how nice he was, no matter what recommendations, and he wanted to be our babysitter, I'd say, get out of here. I'm like having a guy as a babysitter. Men can be the worst. They can be great too. But And I'm so ruined for the Catholic Church. I mean, because of all these molestations, I see the guy with the little collar thing, and I'm like, I have to fight myself, thinking, this guy's a pedophile. Because the news has... And, and look, and that guy's probably a great guy. It took a few bad guys and a few bad guys to let these bad guys propagate all over to make this these molestations epic so you got to ask yourself if you're in a place where people aren't talking about these things it isn't maybe it isn't if it's going down it's happening the molestations are happening so rather than going over and saying hey look at the dutch look how wrong christianity is look how wrong catholic churches say Thanks, Catholic Church, for reminding me. Let's do a little homework and see what's happening under our roof. Let me know what you think.